important is your regional and local identity? Well, in Essex, a charity has been set up to challenge the traditional Essex girl image. In Northamptonshire, there's fury among some at plans to rebrand the county North Londonshire to lure people out of the capital. And it's not so long since Norfolk County Council launched an ad campaign with the rather derogatory phrase, normal for Norfolk. So does the region's image really need a makeover? Lorna Rams has been finding out. First, it was Sharon and Tracy. Then it was Jade and Jodie. All typical Essex girls. Or are they? Some people in Chelmsford have rather different views. It does get a bit frustrating when sort of you want to be treated with respect and people treat you as if you're just a dumb blonde. You haven't had a girl on TV, an Essex girl. Don't what they say? Well, that's what the boys say. I know some very, very lovely Essex girls um, who are not fitting into that stereotype at all. In fact, I haven't seen anyone in white stilettos for <laughs> 25 years. The Essex girl image may be the source of a lot of banter here, but one woman from Gallywood near Chelmsford has become so sick of it, she's decided to do something about it. You won't find any white stilettos at Daphne Fields' home. She's set up a charity called the Essex Women's Advisory Group to help the county's women turn over a new leaf when it comes to their image. If I was... Um if I happen to be 17 or 18 years old and going out to a club and meeting boys for the first time, I wouldn't want to have to put up with these, the coarse jokes. Both Norfolk and Northamptonshire have looked at ways of using advertising to make people think differently about their counties. And in Northamptonshire, that hasn't gone down too well. 900 people have protested against plans for a £1.3 million advertising campaign to rebrand Northamptonshire as North Londonshire. It's supposed to encourage people to move to the county from London. This is not about rebranding Northamptonshire. It's about promoting the wonderful opportunities and the wonderful quality of, uh, of opportunities that we have here in Northamptonshire. But marketing campaigns cost money. Norfolk spending £200,000 to promote itself worldwide. And controversially, it plays on an old phrase stereotyping local people as a bit backward. But is all this rebranding really worth it? It takes longer than two months to change a stereotype. It's a matter of years. But I think it's a really exciting start. And what I hope is that other organisations and other people will get behind it. And as I say, that other interesting people from Essex will pop out and say, Hi, I'm an Essex girl too. You didn't know that, did you? So while a makeover doesn't go amiss every now and then... Essex, Norfolk and Northamptonshire should remember, some people like them just as they are. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, Chelmsford. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> We've already had some responses to that story. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, let's take a look at these. Nina Mary says, I'm a born and bred Essex girl. People think we're blonde, orange and dumb, but we're not. I'm brunette, white and accomplished with four A levels. Well Thanks done. for that. Essex expat Lawrence Peters, who now lives in Norfolk, says very eloquently, true denizens of Essex mm. have their roots deeply implanted in the culture and soil of this beloved county of which I'm proud to be its son. Positively poetic, yeah. Lawrence. And uh, finish on this one from Donna Cottrell, who's lived in Essex all her life and says she would never wear white shoes of any kind. She goes on to say we're no different, no better, no worse than any other part of the country. Thanks for all of those. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. And don't forget, you can always get in touch on Jonathan and Becky at ITV.com. Right then, what else have we got for you this Friday evening then? Well, there's the, uh, the football preview. There is indeed. And the weekend weather. More news from your part of the region. The norovirus has struck again. South End University Hospital has banned all visitors after the latest outbreak of the vomiting bug. There are currently four wards shut to new patients, but the hospital has decided to suspend visiting temporarily too. The hospital says patients not affected by the bug should still attend their hospital appointments. An 18-year-old man has been charged with attempted murder after an incident in a Suffolk village. Paramedics were called to a house on Stowe Road in Ixworth just after 6 o'clock on Wednesday night. A 41-year-old man is being treated for stab wounds at Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge. 18-year-old Darrell Trevors was remanded in custody to appear before Ipswich Crown Court. 
Firefighters have been tackling a fire in a thatched cottage at Weathersfield near Braintree in Essex. Crews from six units were called to the cottage in Gosfield Road, where the fire had already spread to the first floor. Firefighters got into the lost space but were forced back by the flames, although they did manage to save many of the family's possessions. A sixth form college in Norfolk is going to change its timetable so students can catch more convenient trains. Paston Sixth Form College in North Walsham has also become the first of its kind in the country to do a sponsorship deal with the local station. James Bush reports. The library at Paston Sixth Form College in North Walsham is a popular place. As the young people study, they're under the watchful eye of former student Admiral Lord Nelson. From September, the college day here will begin at five past nine in the morning to allow students to arrive on the most convenient train service. At the moment, many have to get there early and then wait for their lectures to start. Being able to get the train later is brilliant, really, because I get to stay in bed. It's going to be more convenient. Um, um, yeah, it's just, it's just going to be better all around, I think. Um, it'll just help. At the moment, we don't get any time to talk to the teachers, so... That'll be a lot easier. Nelson would no doubt have been proud of the nautical theme as the college also unveiled a new sponsorship deal to put its name onto signs at North Walsham Station. One, two, three. Uh, I think for us it's, it's making a big message that we are a very, very important organisation in this town. Uh, but I also think it's going to encourage more people to come and study at Paston College, which is a very good thing. The college says it hopes the move to synchronise lectures with train timetables will underline its commitment to promoting green and sustainable transport. The students seem to be focusing on the fact that in future, those who travel by train won't need to get up so early in the morning. James Bush, Anglia News. I certainly love oh, that. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> now, giving people with disabilities the skills and confidence they need to get back to work is the aim of a new centre opening at Rochford in Essex. It'll be the new home of the charity Disability Essex. At a cost of £2 million, it's designed to be eco-friendly. Now, it also has a grass roof, and it also has its own goat on it. Don't worry, it's not real. I could walk at some t uh, uh, two years ago, and um, I think it's confidence. If you've been out of work for a long time, um, you need some support, and, and that is what the centre can provide. Let's have some football now, and it's fair to say Southend United's season has been a roller coaster ride. The club still won't talk about its financial position, with rumours players are not being paid on time, and they've yet to win in 2010. That's where Donovan Blake starts our roundup. South End manager Steve Tilson and skipper Adam Barrett enjoyed the ride as the club went up and up from League Two. But it's been a struggle since relegation from the Championship. This year their season is heading downhill fast. Can they halt the slide at Hartlepool tomorrow? They're all cup finals now. We just, you know, we can't afford to drop points against teams that are in and around us. Uh, and it's still in our own hands and we want to make sure it stays that way. It is about consolidation. It is about staying in this division next year. It's a, it's a big challenge and it will certainly be up there with, with the back-to-back -back promotions in, in my eyes. So South End have had to cope with a lot of twists and turns all season, but for Norwich, it's all been going one way. And with things going so well, Norwich boss Paul Lambert has brought in Preston striker Stephen Elliott on loan, a timely boost to their promotion ambitions ahead of Yeovil's visit. The lads obviously here have done a great job in getting in the position that they are now, so I'm coming in here hopefully like with a bit of experience I have and that to just help out the lads till the end of the season. A Norwich win will leave them 13 points clear of Colchester, who don't play until Monday night against Brighton. For Ipswich in the Championship, their destination is another seaside resort, Blackpool, where they won in the FA Cup. It's the first of seven games this month. Their survival hopes could well be carved out by the end of that sequence. At least we're looking a bit more solid. That, that gives you a chance. As much as we're disappointed with the lack of wins, you know, three defeats in 20-odd games is not bad either. So that gives you a chance. Peterborough have resumed their survival bid tomorrow against Coventry without George Boyd after his loan move to Nottingham Forest. Posh, like South End, will be hoping the sun doesn't set too early on their season. Donovan Blake, Anglia News, South End on Sea. Lovely sight. Mm.